Hey friends, this is Ricky Watt. I'm pastor of Havenwoods Baptist Church and I want to thank you for joining me today as we look to God's Word to see how God would have us to apply and live out His Word in our daily life. Today I want to talk to you about Thanksgiving. Now as we think about Thanksgiving, a lot of us think about a date on the calendar. But the fact is there is great power in our lives when we choose to be thankful. And it really is a choice that we make each day. Will I be thankful or will I be ungrateful? And there is such power in our gratitude. This series that we're in right now I have entitled Thanking Through It. Because when we're going through struggles and trials in our lives, a lot of times we want to think our way through it. But I believe God's Word instructs us, instead of thinking our way through it, we need to think our way through it. And when you do that, it just gives you a whole different perspective on what God is doing in your life. So if you have your Bible today, I'd like for you to take it and turn to Psalm 107. Psalm 107, and I've entitled this message, Give Thanks for the Steadfast Love of God. Give Thanks for the Steadfast Love of God. Today we're going to be reminded of the faithfulness of God. That God's love is unfailing and unwavering in our lives. And so what I want us to do today is look here in Psalm 107 at four different instances where the psalmist writes here about trials and struggles that we go through. But he starts out in Psalm 107 and verse 1 and he writes and says this, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. So he says there in verse 2, he says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We say that a lot of times in our church when it comes testimony time. Hey, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Share what God has done in your life. But then he says this, whom He has redeemed from trouble. Friend, He has redeemed us from trouble. And the way that He chose to do that is through His faithful, steadfast love. So what I want us to do is take the rest of our time and look at these four groups of people that He addresses here in Psalm 107. The first group that He addresses is the wanderer. That one who has wandered off away from God. And he says this in Psalm 107, beginning in verse 4. He says, Some wandered in desert waste, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Friend, can I ask you today, have you been that wanderer? Have you been that one that you may know the Lord, you may have a relationship with God, but you've just wandered away from Him over time? I remember when I was a little boy, we used to, uh, it was a big deal for us to come to Mobile and go to Bel Air Mall and Springdale Mall. And, and I remember there were times that we would get in those big department stores there and, and I'd wander off. And, and, and you know, Inevitably, either my mom or dad would find me, or if it got really bad, they'd call over the loudspeaker in the store and say, Ricky Watt, if you're out there, please come over here. Your mom and dad are looking for you. And, and I knew I was in big trouble then. The fact is, friend, we have all wandered from God. Uh, Psalm, uh, I mean Isaiah 53 and verse 6, the Bible says this, All we like sheep have gone astray. 
We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Friend, that's who we were. We have wandered from God. We have gone astray. Ultimately, we were lost in our sin and God sent Jesus to come to this earth to take our punishment, to take our pain, to pay our penalty for our sin. We wandered from God and God came to us through the person of Jesus Christ, His only Son, Jesus died on the cross. He was buried for us. He rose again on the third day for us. And He says if we will believe in our heart what God has done for us, what Jesus did for us, and we confess with our mouth Jesus Christ is our personal Savior and Lord, friend, He will call us as wanderers to Himself. I love what the Bible says in each one of these accounts. Here in verse 6 of Psalm 107, it says, Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way till they reached a city to dwell in. Friend, that's what God does. When we call out to Him, when we cry out to the Lord in the midst of our trouble, He is faithful. Why? Because of His steadfast love. His unwavering love. His unchanging love. And then our response to that, when we cry out to Him and He brings us into relationship with Him, is found in verse 8. It says, let them thank the Lord for His steadfast love, for His wondrous works to the children of man. For He satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul He fills with good things. Man, isn't that good? To know that we can wander away from God and He's seeking for us. He's looking for us. And when we come to that moment where we cry out to God, He gives us a home. He he makes us right with Him. And He says, and then our response should be to praise the Lord. Praise God for His steadfast love. So the first group is the wanderer. The second person that he addresses here is the prisoner. And he speaks to the prisoner in uh, Psalm 107, verses 10 through 12. And this is what the Bible says there. Some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, prisoners in affliction and in irons. For they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. So he bowed their hearts down with hard labor. They fell down with none to help. Oh friend, have you ever been that prisoner? That one who is bound up in the chains of sin and bondage in our lives? Every one of us have those struggles in our lives each and every day and we have a choice to make. Who will win in my life? Will my flesh win or will the Spirit win? And the one who wins is the one you feed the most. If you feed your flesh, the flesh will rule and reign in your life. But if you feed the Spirit in your heart, with your mind, with your thoughts... Friend, the Spirit of God will enable you to walk in victory and you can leave those chains behind. The Bible says, He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So what did the prisoner do? Well, let's look down in verse 13 here. It says, Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and burst their bonds 
apart. Again, here's this person who is, who is just in bondage to sin. He's a prisoner to sin. And the Bible says, and then he cried out to the Lord. And what did the Lord do? He heard him. He set him free from his bondage. And what should that prisoner do in response to the steadfast love of God? We'll look in verse 15. He says, Let them thank the Lord for His steadfast love, for His wondrous works to the children of man. For He shatters the doors of bronze and cuts into the bars of iron. Boy, isn't that, that incredible? That's just incredible to think of the fact that God so loves us that He seeks after the wanderer. He breaks the chains of the prisoner. The third person that He speaks to in this passage is the sick. He says in verses 17 and 18, He said, Some were fools through their sinful ways. And because of their iniquities, suffered affliction. They loathed any kind of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. That, friend, we could get so bound up in sin that it affects us physically, it causes us to struggle physically. But again, what happens to that one? who is bound up in sickness. Well, he says there in uh, verse 19, it says, Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them from their distress. He sent out His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Again, just the steadfast love of God that He comes to the wanderer. He sets free the prisoner. And oh friend, He he heals the sick. But the very important part that we skip over sometimes is that we've got to call out to the Lord. And when we call out to the Lord, and when He heals us, in verse 21 This is what He instructs us to do. Let them thank the Lord for His steadfast love, for His wondrous works to the children of man. And let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of His deeds in songs of joy. He says, if if you've been a wanderer and God's called you back, if you've been a prisoner and God set you free, If you've been sick and and God has healed you, be thankful for the steadfast love of God. And then the fourth and final person that he speaks to here is he speaks to those who are in the storm. Maybe you're watching this today and you just feel like storm after storm has rolled through in your life. And you've just got been hit by wave after wave of trouble and struggle in your life. Well, God speaks to you in Psalm 107, verses 23 through 27. This is what He says. He says, so, Some went down to the sea in ships, doing business on the great waters, They saw the deeds of the Lord, His wondrous works in the deep. For He commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven. They went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. They reeled and staggered like drunken men and were at their wit's end. Have you ever been there? You're just at your wit's end of the storms of life, the struggle, the pain that we go through routinely in this world, even as Christians. And many people think, well, you give your life to Christ and everything's just going to be wonderful and awesome every day. And I'm here to tell you, friend, there are storms that come our way. 
And in the midst of the storm, what do we do? The Bible tells us. The Word of God says here in verse 28 of of, uh, Psalm 107, it says this, Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. Does that sound familiar? And He delivered them from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. Then they were glad that the waters were quiet, and He brought them to their desired haven. Oh friend, you ever been there? You've been in the middle of the storm, you cried out to God, and God met you there. The love of God did not turn away from you. Instead, God came to you. Isn't it amazing in our lives when we're going through struggles and trials in our lives that many will run away? But instead, Jesus, when He came into our heart and life, He came to stay. That's why He says, I'm an ever-present help in your time of need. His Word says He will never leave you nor forsake you. Isaiah 26 and verse 3, the Bible says, You keep Him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because He trusts in you. And friend, I want to encourage you today, if you're going through a trial or a struggle or a storm in your life, trust the Lord. Don't give up on God. He knows where you are. And not only does He know where you are, He is present with you in the middle of that storm. So what do we do when we're in a storm and we cry out to God and He comes and rescues us from the storm? Well, He gives us instruction about that in verse 31. The Bible says there, Now let them thank the Lord for His steadfast love for His wondrous works to the children of man. Let them extol Him in the congregation of the people and praise Him in the assembly of the elders. Oh friend, today you may be wandering from God. And I'm just here to tell you, you can cry out to God and He'll come to you. And He'll give you a home. If you don't know Jesus today, you can call out to Him wherever you are. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. God loves you. And He has an incredible plan for your life. And if you've been that wanderer and God has come to you, praise God for His steadfast love. Maybe you're watching today and you're that one who was, is the prisoner. You're bound up by sin in your heart. and you, you feel like there's no hope. Friend, I want you to know there is hope. And the hope has a name. His name's Jesus. You can cry out to Him in your struggle, in your chains. And the Bible says He can set you free. And if He's done that, praise the Lord for His steadfast love. You may be watching right now and you're going through a time of sickness in your life. And you're calling out to God and you're saying, God, I need you to help me. God, I need you to heal me. God, I need you to give me strength. And when you cry out to Him, He will meet you in the middle of your pain. And when He does... You need to praise the Lord for His steadfast love. Friend, maybe today as you're watching right now, you are in the middle of a storm in your life. You're going through struggles and trials that you never imagined and you just feel overwhelmed, you feel discouraged, you feel defeated. And you say, Ricky, what do I do? I'll tell you what to do. Cry out to the Lord. And He'll deliver you from that struggle. He will walk you through it to the other side. And friend, when He does, you know what you need to do. You need to praise the Lord 
for His steadfast love. As I was studying for this message, I was reminded of where I was when God came to me. I looked over to a verse that ministers to my heart every time I read it because it's just my heart of where I was when God came to me. And it's found in Psalm 40. And the Bible says this, Psalm 40 verses 1 through 3. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord and He inclined to me and heard my cry. Listen to this. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Friend, I was down in the pit. I was in the miry clay of sin. And you know what I did? I called out to the Lord. And He came to me. And He loved me. And He gave me a purpose. He gave me peace. He gave me hope. And friend, I want you to know today, God can do all that for you. If you had just called on Jesus today. And you know what my response is to what He's done in my life? I just praise the Lord for His steadfast love in my life. I want to pray for you today right now. God, I pray for each one who's watching this video. God, I pray today for that wanderer. That one who doesn't know You today. That one who is lost in their sin. And today, God, You can come to them and show them Your purpose and Your plan and Your love and Your grace and mercy for them. And God, today, they can call out to Jesus anytime, anywhere, and ask You to forgive them of their sin and to come into their heart and life and save them. And God, I thank You today that that we can have a relationship with You when we surrender our lives to You. God, I pray right now if there's anybody watching who's never trusted Jesus as their Savior, That right now they would just, as the Holy Spirit deals with their heart and they feel that that desire to give their life to Jesus, that right now they would just say this simple prayer to you. Just say, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. And today, Jesus, I give you my heart and life. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me of my sin. And change me from the inside out. I surrender my whole life to you. And from this day forward, I'll commit my life to you. Help me live like you want me to. In Jesus' name. And Father, I pray today not only for that wanderer. But God, I also pray today for that prisoner. That one who is struggling and battling habitual sin in their life and they just feel so bound up and in bondage to that sin. God, I pray today that they would call out to You and allow You to set them free. Your Word says that if we confess our sin, You are faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh God, I pray we'd do that today. And Lord, as you set us free from that bondage, I pray we would thank you and praise you for your steadfast love. God, I pray for those who are watching right now who are sick and dealing with physical struggles in their life. God, I pray in the middle of that they would call out to the Lord. God, that you would touch them. 
you would heal them. You would strengthen them. And God, as you do that, that they would just choose to praise you and thank you for your steadfast love. And then, God, I pray for my brothers and sisters who are going through storms today. God, they may be physical storms. They may be emotional storms. They may be mental storms. They may be financial storms. Or they may just be spiritual storms, just spiritual battles we're dealing with and struggling with in our lives. God, I pray today you give them the strength to call out to the Lord. And when they do, that God, you would come and meet them and be the master of the sea. That Lord, we know you can control the wind and the waves and the storm. And God, I just pray that you would help us to call out to you. And when we do, that Lord, you would meet us in the middle of our storm and bring peace and help and hope to our hearts. And when you do, God, I pray we just praise you and thank you for your steadfast love. God, thank you for this reminder today of your faithfulness, of your goodness, of your mercy and grace. And I pray today we would be encouraged to remember all those times that you've come to us in every condition, in every situation, and you've rescued us and given us hope. And God, I pray as a result of that, we would be quick to say, God, I praise you and I thank you for your steadfast love in my life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, listen, friend, if this message today has encouraged you, if it's helped you, the Word is so powerful. The Holy Spirit is so strong and so faithful to minister His Word to our heart, our heart right when we need it, right where we are. If this has encouraged you today, I want to ask you to, to please share it with your family and friends so that God's Word can minister to them. As always, if you have a prayer need, if God's doing something in your life, we would just love to know that you're there and that you're watching and that you're being encouraged by these messages. I would love to hear from you. You can send me an email to rickywatt at gmail.com and I promise you I will pray for you and I will lift you up to the Lord and I'd love to minister to you and encourage you in any way that I can. But I want to thank you for joining me today. I pray that God will bless you and use you for His glory. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon. God bless you and have a great day.